We had a ton of great options, basically endless options of places that I could have taken on this challenge. I knew I had to do it someplace that was meaningful, that was special to me, that meant something. Perhaps there's no other place that holds as much significance as Big Bear Lake, California. This is where I grew up from the time I was five years old. I helped my dad build the house that I lived in throughout my childhood and then I still come home to visit. This is the place where I grew up, the place where I found running for the first time with my first 15 mile run around the lake with my dad. Growing up in Big Bear was not your typical SoCal experience. Instead of being on the beach in the sunshine, we're up nestled in mountains with ski resorts just a mile away from where I grew up. Pine trees everywhere, trails that are just epic running through the mountains. I grew up just loving to be outside and you could almost always find me outside at all times. The community is just a small community of about 9,000 people and we all know each other, we all root for each other, we're behind each other. It's not just the atmosphere, it's the people that are so special to me here and why it's so important for me to come back to my hometown, to the track where it all started for me. What's up guys, June 16th, 2021, morning of the challenge. I'm sitting in my home in Big Bear Lake, California, where it all began. So excited for this challenge. Also super nervous because I'm not sure if I can do this or not. It's going to be a real test of everything inside me. It's going to be coming out all my strength, all my endurance. I'm going to need all of that. So trying to set this thing up as best I can. I've learned from powerlifting that oftentimes whether you hit a lift or miss a lift is in the setup. So everything's got to be on point. My nutrition, my electrolytes, my food. Um, it's, it's all got to be there for me to do this challenge today. So hitting a bagel, keeping my carbs super simple before the challenge. Been hitting some protein, just simple whey protein, something that just sits really easy in my body, something I'm used to. So I've been hitting that. And then electrolytes are super, super important. If I want to be have my muscles fully firing, that they, they have to have electrolytes and electrolyte balance to do that. So I've been hitting some noon as well. And... Uh, just laying low, a lot of sitting down. I'm gonna do some rolling later on, get my back nice and loosened up, and then we'll get out there and get this challenge underway. Initially, I hated to run. I was playing baseball, basketball, and football. I was in middle school, and I was just like every kid in my class. When I would get out there and I was forced to run that mile for time, I would pour myself into it because there was a school record, and I really wanted to break that school record. And I did break that school record in my first ever mile for time when I was in seventh grade. And actually it was after running that first mile for time and breaking the school record that my dad had this conversation with me, which I will never forget. And he told me this, he said, listen, you can be great at distance running, but the choice is yours. The drive has to come from you. So if you ever want to get in distance running, I'm behind you and I'm willing to go on this journey with you. But at the time when my dad told me that, I had zero desire to get into distance running. There was one time in particular where Ryan, just Ryan and I were running, and we were running up this hill, and uh, this mountain really. Uh, we run up one of our mountains, and which we did a lot. Uh, we did a lot of running at Snow Summit, and we ran a lot of the mountains around in Big Bear. And so, Ryan and I were running up this mountain and I was just kind of quietly praying as we were running and I stopped and I said, right, why don't you keep going up the mountain? I just want to sit here and, and have a prayer time for you. So um, I did and Ryan went up the mountain and he came back and then we were, I picked me up and we were going back down and he said, well, Dad, so what did uh, God have to say to you? And I said, well, you know, I've never really felt a lot where you felt like you could say this is exactly what God was saying to you. I just had told Ryan, you know, I felt like the Lord was really saying to me, 
you know, that you're going to race all around the world. And at that time, Ryan thought I was, he thought I was crazy. He laughed at me and just said, oh, come on, Dad. <laughs> I haven't even hardly run in any races. Um, but that was probably the time when I was pretty sure that Ryan was going to run in a way that would affect a lot of people. So when I was in middle school, I broke the school record in the mile, but I was not the only kid who was fast in my grade. I had an arch nemesis in Gilberto Santillian. And it's funny to talk about this now because we'd go on to become super good friends in high school, running together, training together, and still keep in touch to this day. So I would set the school record early on in the day, and then later in the day when Gilberto's PE class rolled around, he would oftentimes break my school record. So it was this constant back and forth battle between Gilberto and I who would have the school record. Now, once every year, we'd have a school-wide track meet where everyone in the school would compete in a track meet together, and this would be the one time when Gilberto and I would get to face off. One of the most epic grudge matches I've ever had in my running career was with Gilberto at the eighth grade school-wide track meet. I'll never forget this race. Number one, I didn't want to run the race. I remember when we were signing up for what event we do at the school-wide track meet, the PE teacher asked, all right, who wants to run the mile? And of course, no hands went up, but I could feel every single kid's eyeballs staring at me like, Ryan, you have to run the mile. When the big day came for the school I tracked me, I remember being super nervous. I could hardly eat anything the whole day leading up to the track meet. I'll never forget being on the starting line, looking down at the other kids who were competing in the mile run, who were dressed similar to me, wearing a white cotton shirt, long shorts that went down past the knees, and basketball shoes. Whereas I looked at Gilberto, and he was fully outfitted in a singlet, running shorts, and track spikes, which I had never even seen in my life. I remember it felt like a small eternity as I waited for the starter to slowly raise the starting gun from the ground into the air, and his finger just curling around that starting pistol waiting to pull the trigger. And this is something that didn't change throughout my running career. Every single time that starter would slowly raise the gun into the air, I felt like my chest was going to explode with nerves, whether it was a middle school track meet, the Olympic Games, NCAA championships, wherever I found myself, this sensation never changed. When the gun fired, Gilberto went straight to his rockets. He went out super hard, put a big gap on me and the rest of the field. I remember hearing kids on the sideline joking about how they just made a bet before the race and they were betting money that Gilberto was going to beat me. I remember being aware of my cheering peers as I was coming past the home stretch on that first lap with Gilberto still far, far in front of me. As the race unfolded, I knew I had to start to get to work. Gilberto's gap was only growing. I had to put a stop to it. I had to start taking ground back. Problem is, when I increased my pace, I could feel everything starting to burn within me. I could taste blood in my mouth. But it was working. My extra efforts that I was giving throughout the race was allowing me to slowly, slowly close the gap on Gilberto. 
By the time the bell came with one lap to go, I was with Gilberto and I knew that I had to go past him. As we hit the back stretch on that final lap, I edged past Gilberto ever so slightly, getting into the lead and driving with my arms, driving with my legs, my lungs on fire, tasting blood in my mouth, nothing but pain was what I was experiencing in that moment. My vision beginning to collapse into tunnel vision, sweat pouring down my brow. I was literally flat out with 200 meters to go and I had Gilberto sitting right on my shoulder. I remember coming off that final bin and hearing my peers and their cheers just urging me on, getting me to that finish line. I had the smallest, tiny little gap over Gilberto, but somehow I was able to maintain down that home stretch and break the tape first in a new school record of 532. Crossing the finish line, I felt this huge metaphorical weight just exploding off my shoulders. I'd done it, I'd held off Gilberto, I'd set a school record in the process, but to be honest, I don't remember the entire middle school exploding in celebration. I don't remember anyone's reaction to the race. I just remember having this huge surge of adrenaline and endorphins and how good it felt to accomplish a goal, to push myself to the very limits of what I was capable of in that moment. And I remember the beauty of that feeling and that feeling would revisit me every single race that I do over my professional career and even today as a retired professional athlete I continue to seek out this feeling this feeling of being able to make my body strong to be able to partner with my body to have it achieve things that I want it to do it's this moment of Finding out what is inside of me, finding out what I'm capable of that keeps me coming back to sport, whether it's lifting or running, whatever challenges I may take on, it's this moment of accomplishment, of adrenaline, of endorphin rush, of knowing that I left it all out on the track. Really hard. <laughs> I don't know what... I don't know what happened. What's wrong with 528? That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. I'll take First it. First time out. Got to put something. Got to put something out there. Yeah. Yeah. You got a mark on the board, but it's all right. That's like we make challenges like this fun. Yeah. So don't just like get reasonably fit and go out and do it. I, I must have been. I got practice running off the bar. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I took a little spill there, and then I think I just, me got out a little bit too hard, and then just struggling the last two laps so hey putting that out there you yeah. gotta try it somehow huh? gotta try it and up at altitude 90 yeah. some degrees dirt yeah. track yeah i had the, the the deck was stacked today it was tough but it always is you know exactly well i'll get it i'll be back i'll try again put it that was a pain train yeah. last, <laughs> last two laps was ugly but still uh beat my eighth grade self <laughs> but i mean i I set the school record here. I think I ran like 532 was my best, 527. The deadlift just fell, fell really hard. So yeah, I think I had to really bring everything for that, you know. And I think it just kind of got my mind a little bit. Well, man, you struggled off the bar. And yeah, and I fell and off the bar. You had to get up and yeah. broke your rhythm. Yeah, it was. It's funny though. 204 marathon hits the deadlift and not the mind. So obviously not exactly what I was hoping for today, but hey, that is real life. And that is taking on challenges is you don't always hit it. And I'm already just like shaking my head. Like I can't believe I missed that. I really thought I was gonna get it today. It would've been super special to do it on that track up here in Big Bear. But uh, it's also kind of like lighting a fire in me. I'm like, I need to uh, explore, make some changes in my training, especially my run training, obviously, having missed the run today. So I need to I need to set it up better. I need to do it at sea level. I need to do it in better conditions when it's not 90 degrees up here at 7,000 feet. But uh, I need to also kind of change up my run training. I might have to start um, increasing the amount of sessions I'm doing. So right now I'm going once every fourth day. I think I might need to go every other day um, for a while, but I'm also gonna, I think, push back the challenge until the fall and, uh, and hit some better conditions because I can't pull uh, big weights in the morning time, so I gotta wait till afternoon. So I'm not gonna get good weather till the fall. So 
I'm gonna make those tweaks, those adjustments, but I can tell you this, I'm like way more fired up now than I was before this challenge. And when you fail a challenge, I think there's two responses you can have to that. You can either get really bummed out, discouraged, and throw in the towel, or you can be like, what can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? And like, this is gonna make me a better athlete and a better person. And that's where I'm at right now. I'm all just chewing on my training, what tweaks can I make nutritionally, um, with my strength training, with my run training. Like I need to switch some things up. I need to set it up differently. Already like my mind is just going a million miles a second. So I'm super excited to get back out there, take on this challenge again in the fall. And, uh, and try and put out a special time that is something to uh, write home about. So thanks for tuning in, guys. It's super fun sharing this real-life challenge with you. And uh, stay tuned for the next time out. It's going to be even more epic.